All right, we're going to start a number of misdemeanor sentences here shortly. People be logging in. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Or seven. Good morning, sir. What's your name? Richard Hatchkiss. All right, Mr. Hatchkiss, name your name. 
Good morning, Mr. Macquill. Morning, Your Honor. Mr. Macquill, which case are you here on? Um, Monroe Learn. Okay. He's in the waiting room. I didn't realize, did I know you were in there on that? Well, I just got involved yesterday, Judge, just because I was involved with some PPO issues and talked to KC and wasn't sure exactly if there was a uh, uh, underlying issue that I thought you needed addressed, so I, I decided to appear just for this hearing. All right, that's fine. Mr. Hotchkiss, could you take your hat and your mask off, please? Move back. Good morning, sir. All right, I've got a number of people in the mm -hmm. waiting room. We have actually seven sentences all here in a short time. I'm not sure all seven people are going to appear. We've got Attorney Deborah Davis here on behalf of the prosecutor's office. Laurie Hines is here for Marcus Taylor, who's not logged in yet. Uh, Melissa Halleck, I think, is caught next door in that Andrews case. He is here. And uh, Monroe Learn and Andrew Hartzell are here. I'm going to bring them all in. We are live on YouTube. And we're on Zoom. Good morning, everyone. You're here for sentencing. We have uh, three cases where we have attorneys, actually four, and three where we don't. So we have uh, Mr. Ucab Andrews. Your attorney, Ms. Halleck, is caught in the court next door, so you're in the right place. You just stay where you are. Mr. Hartzell is here. We needed to figure out the restitution amount. He's not represented. The only person that is represented is, uh, where they, both parties are here, is Mr. Learn. You go ahead and call that case. This is file 202896. Uh, People versus Monroe E. Learn. Good morning, Mr. Learn. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. Mr. Mequio has appeared here this morning. Mr. Mequio, are you going to appear in this matter? Yes, Your Honor. I think we faxed over our appearance yesterday. I hadn't made it to the file yet, but uh, maybe it's in on base and I didn't see it. And uh, I'm glad you're here. This is a time for sentencing and a charge of livestock at large. Defendant pled to this on March 23rd, and the matter was set for sentencing. There were multiple counts. I wanted to get the police report, which was telling. Um, the defendant owns a number of business enterprises in um, other things, including a cattle farm out in the boondocks at Buckcorn and Muskrat Road. But he has cows there that are continually getting loose. Uh, there's an allegation that cows were loose on, at least from the Sheriff's Department reports, February 19th of 2020, 222 of 20, 317 of 20, 4, 6 of 20, 4, 19 of 20, 4, 20 of 20, May 12th of 20, May 13th of 20, 12, 15 of 20, 12, 18, 20. I think that's the one he actually pled to. 12, 30 of 20 and 12, 31 of 20. That did not include the cases taken by the Michigan State Police. All law enforcement was sick and tired and of chasing these cows around and uh, 
that particular night, there were about 15 to 20 cows out in the road in this very rural part of the county. Um, with that sort of a police report in the file, Mr. Learn, if somebody hits one of your cows, they're going to own everything that you own. They're going to sue you civilly. Somebody hits one of these cows in the night and is killed. You can just about guarantee they're going to sue you to some considerable extent. So that's always a concern is that they don't want someone to get hurt. So I have a sort of in my mind what I intend to do here, but I'm willing to hear from you, Mr. Mequio, and from the prosecutor. Uh, who do you want to hear from first, Your Honor? I'll hear from you. Thank you. Um, Judge, the uh, reason I got involved in this case so late is I uh, learned about it not too long ago. But I learned about it in conjunction of some other issues that have been going on uh, with Monty's farm and some other personal issues he's had. Um, unfortunately, uh, it is difficult to establish, and we are working on that, that some of this stuff has been due to, um, if not all, and we haven't been able to establish yet, to sabotage from a disgruntled tenant that uh, Monty had. Uh, he had to go through the process of evicting this individual. That process took quite a while because Monty decided to do it kind of politely first by serving a letter on them before seeking counsel. I think that's well, I did that. Uh, yeah. I did that termination of tenancy case, and that tenant was not very happy. But I told her that Mr. Learn had the right to the relief he was asking for in order to be out. I think they may have actually had to do a physical eviction. But I am aware there was some animosity in that case. I also watched the PPO case that Judge Pattison did, which was related to my landlord-tenant case. So uh, maybe that gives me a little more background. I am aware of that relationship. I didn't realize that was this place. Yeah, um, the And what's, I guess, occurring and what we're trying to figure out how to stop it. In fact, uh, Monty and I spoke this morning and he told me that just, I think it was last night or just the other day, uh, there was again an obvious sabotage attempt on his fence where somebody threw a wire over the electronic fence, which would shorten it out and thus make the cattle, cattle able to, um, to move free. But um, I've been working with him and making some suggestions as to how we can help the police perhaps investigate and, and stem this tide. I also, uh, coincidentally, when the court started talking about liability, that's the first thing I told Monty is was my concern that now that there's an established track record of police contact, that if one of those cows gets out and somebody hits the cow and gets hurt, uh, as the court has indicated, uh, there's a real concern over liability and, and how that will be uh, factored into any liability case. Um, Monty is aware of the situation. Um, he's had some uh, physical issues that he's been dealing with, but he's still working diligently towards getting this uh, cow situation under control. If it is a matter of sabotage, we're hoping the police will be able to help at least solve that part of it, and then that'll stop a huge part of any of the issues that we think that are going on. Well, as I um, understand it, there's no one presently in the house at where these cows are? Monty, you may answer that. Do you know? Yes. Uh, Tim is, is run at the place from us, and he he's willing to work with his cows, and his son also. His son is um, about 25, 30 years old. Uh, a little slow, but they like the cattle, and they're they're going to be moving in here. The the house is already for them, probably here in the next week or so. But so there, there will be a tenant farmer on that farm. Yes, every day. That'll help a lot. Does Davis you have any input on this? <laughs> You're kind of our resident livestock expert, so well, you, and Mr. you and Mr. Reed. I wouldn't say TJ. It's been a while since he's had any livestock, other than a goat at his door. Um, 
I didn't have this on my schedule as something that's a county case. I thought it was a township, maybe, or? No, it's the animal control officer. Well, I mean, obviously, if there's sabotage going on with a disgruntled person, um, it, it does make it difficult to hold Mr. Learn, uh, you know, toes to the fire if somebody is going out and, and letting these animals out. I think he's probably got a pretty strong desire to keep them in where they're supposed to be for his business to be profitable and to avoid being sued civilly. So uh, with that, I'd leave it to the court's discretion as to how to sentence today. Mr. Learn, is there anything else you want to tell me? You know, Judge, I have never, you you know me. I, I'm always been straight up with you and, and I am trying to do the best I possibly can, but I'm even looking at hiring maybe a private investigator. We have, you know, they the cattle part is just one part of this that has caused a lot of problems and I can't really even the animal control guy goes well you got to catch them well we caught them on our property here about four nights ago and he took off and we couldn't catch him now I can't stop somebody from running I don't have that authority and I can't shoot him to show that he was there I, I it just I tried to get a picture of him um, I got, I got 20 cameras out, but the problem is I got probably two miles of property that's fenced in. So 20 cameras, you know, they cover 90 feet. I mean, that's the max that they cover. Well, if you're looking for cameras, when you're going out there, number one, you're, you're going to see that camera. It's not like it's hidden from you. Um, if, if you, let's say we're just walking through the woods the first time on private property, you probably wouldn't see that camera. But when you're intentionally looking for a camera out in the woods, within that 90 feet that you're going to do some damage to, you, you can study that area very well. And at that point, you know, it's a cat and mouse game. Uh, and I, I can't, I, I'm lost, Judge. I, I, I I know I'm responsible. They're my cattle, but I can't. It's like my hands. All right, well, I, I didn't. I guess I, I was more under the assumption this was negligence rather than uh, otherwise. And I'm not sure all these were. They go back for more than a year, and there's dozens of them. But Mr. Mecquio is right in what I said. There's going to be civil liability. Certainly, I agree with what you said. You've always been straight up and owned it and when we had things to deal with and we've had a number of civil cases and i've known you in other contexts as well but certainly this is a, not a jail case there's zero jail there's zero fine 75 dollar crime victims rights fee and the 50 dollar state minimum fee i'm going to put you on probation for 12 months which is non-reporting The only condition is that animals not be at large at this property. Yeah. And yeah. things are okay for six months, you can be discharged. I'm good with that sense of judge. I'm not here to, to debate that. Well, with if you. you can get another tenant on there, that would help to have somebody in residence. But you've got this very large cattle operation with no people there. And uh, that's very dark, very curvy. Uh, we're fortunate that nobody's hit one of these yet. The only saving grace is because it is so rural, there's not a lot of traffic out there. Um, but I'll have the probation department contact you. The only condition of probation is animals not be at large at this property. Waiving the oversight fees, it will be non-reporting probation, but they have to get the information. And let's hope that somebody doesn't hit one of these cows. And if it is sabotage, we certainly would like to get to the bottom of that because those people could be endangering someone's life rather than just be deviling you. 
All right, Mr. McWheel, Mr. Learn, you're both good to go. Um, Mr. Learn, the probation department will be contacting you. I'll see you. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge, I'm Mr. Hartzell. I can I can report to the court that there is no restitution amount requested by the victim. All right, Mr. Hartzell, then we'll get right to that one. This is file 211120. He pled to failing to stop at the scene of a property damage accident. He hits a mailbox. It's, uh, I'm just going to do a standard fine here. I believe that fail to stop is a $100 fine. Can you hear me, Mr. Hartzell? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Somebody's got some interference. I'm going to order a $100 fine, $75 crime victim's rights fee, and a $50 state minimum fee. It's $225. There is no restitution issue. That's going to be due by August 6th. That's this from today. Can you pay that by then? Yes, sir, I can. All right. Chalk this up to bad experience. Uh, fortunately, you weren't hurt. Nobody else was. Just some mailboxes. All right. $225 by August 6th. Mr. Hartzell, you're good to go. All right. You have a good day, sir. Thank you. Bye. All right. Now, we don't have Melissa yet on Mr. Andrews. I understand she's finished. And we don't have Mr. Taylor for Ms. Hines. Um, Laura, do you have a number for him? The number I have is 503-1971. I have uh, try 503-5789. See if you can reach him. In the meantime, we need Miss uh, uh, Halleck, but we've got Luke of Nofsinger, and we've got Richard Hotchkiss here in our um, waiting room. Uh, good morning, Mr. Hotchkiss. Your attorney, Mr. Luke Nofsinger, is here with us. And uh, this is the time and date for sentencing on a use of methamphetamine charge. You got pulled over on June 3rd. You had some trace amounts of methamphetamine. And uh, a meth pipe. Deborah, you gave me the police report, but I didn't see any weight on that methamphetamine. Is it traces as I thought? I believe so. Let me double check. I can look at the lab report. Luke, what would you like me to know here? Well, exactly that. It's indicative of personal use. Uh, Mr. Hotchkiss was uh, gainfully employed. He was driving to work. Um, he did do a day in jail. Um, he has a limited criminal history. Um, I asked the court to consider that. Um, and I, I thought the report had indicated there was just about, there was less than a gram. I didn't get the police, uh, the lab report. I got the police report, but it looked like quite a small amount. We don't have was, the lab results back. I thought it was referenced in the police report. Narcotic weight, it's on the second page. Of course, that includes the packaging. Right. So, um, a, a small amount, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Davis, what's your thought here? Well, Your Honor, you know, he was detected using a canine, um, but he did admit that he forgot he had the pipe in his pants. He denied any other contraband, but the officers in the search did find a couple of containers um, and another used meth pipe. Uh, I'm not sure what to do with him. I don't know if probation is just setting him up to fail 
uh, but I also don't want to see him continue using methamphetamine. Um, perhaps if he were to go test today to show that he is free of any substances that would maybe help uh, as far as whether or not he's got an issue that he needs assistance with, or if he's been able to stop using without any interference. So I'd leave it to the court's discretion with that. Mr. Hotchkiss, what do you want me to know? Um, I'm, I don't use that very often. I haven't used it since before I got pulled over. Well, I do you use marijuana, but I have not used methamphetamine since before I got pulled over. One concern I've got, you're right, you don't have that much of a criminal history, but you keep driving. Hodgkiss has a prior OUIL and domestic violence. I thought they said in here. He has a use of marijuana too, I think. Um, the vehicle got towed but they didn't charge any DWLS or anything else. Um, where were you working? You stopped a week ago and was issued a ticket for no proof of insurance, but that still hadn't made the vehicle legal. You worked at yeah, large. I have insurance on my vehicle now. I have insurance. Do you have a valid driver's license? Yes. Are you still working at Marjo's? Yes. What do you do uh, there? I'm at Marjo's. We're closing at 3 o'clock in the afternoon right now. I'm not sure when, but it's supposed to be going back to normal hours shortly. So my hours, my, my hours are kind of part-time right now. All right, but you are still working there? Yes. In fact, when I'm here today, I'll probably go into work for a couple hours. All right, I'm gonna put you in the waiting room for just a minute. Um, where is it? I'm gonna call Marjo's. Sorry about that incessant beeping. Um, Mr. Andrews, let me see if I can locate Ms. Halleck. She was triple booked today, and uh, this case was on and it was off, and she was in Judge Patterson's courtroom, but I thought that was done. address some people that aren't here. One is Tiffany Bowman. This is file 21 or 202566. Uh, this was a retail fraud third degree with a deferral. She doesn't appear that she had done any of the things she was supposed to do. I reached out to probation agent Matt Huff earlier in the week to see what the status of this was. This is file 202566. She hasn't done the economic crime class. She hasn't paid anything and they haven't heard from her and he didn't expect her to show up. But Mr. Huff, what do you know about this? 
simply what you stated already, I did take additional effort to reach out to the new community corrections director, Ryan Smith, um, and no, there was confirmation of no contact um, with him as well in regards to the academic crimes class. I did also reach out to her through telephone yesterday and um, it just rings straight through to busy. So I wasn't able to leave her a message. All right, I'm gonna do a bench warrant. Or fail to appear. Bond is $400, cash or surety. Or C judge, hold 48 hours as required. <clears throat> we also have Alexis Sullivan, who is Mr. Reed's case on a disturbing, disturbing the peace case. Uh, she has also failed to appear. She's been struggling. Uh, Mr. Reed, are you still there? This is file 21291. This defendant, according to the report, was very intoxicated, causing distress in a neighborhood, breaking windows, and we've had trouble getting her here, had several show causes. The matter was set for plea and sentencing today, and Mr. Reed is here. No, I apologize. Of. I'm late. All right. Well, Mr. Andrews is here. He's ready to go, so we'll start here in just a moment. No more order to show cause. I'm going to do a request for bench warrant. And bond $500 cash or surety or C judge hold 48 hours. If anybody has contact with Alexis Sullivan, tell her to contact the court immediately because there's a bench warrant for her arrest. I don't have a phone number to call and she's already done four days in jail. Mr. Andrews, we got uh, Ms. Halleck back with us, so we'll take that up in a minute. Ms. Hines, what did you find out with Mr. Taylor? I called the number that I had for him, Your Honor, and um, it rang and rang, and then I got a message that said no voicemail box set up for this phone number. I've mailed him the notices um, to the address that he gave me. Um, we were set for June 21st. He didn't show what you issued a bench warrant, and then we set it again for today's date. Mr. Taylor just called. He was trying to log in, so you might see him in your waiting room, maybe. Yes, here he is. Apparently, he's shown up. Good. We had the same problem last time. Mr. Taylor, can you hear me? <clears throat> Mr. Taylor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How nice of you to join us. Yes, I'm about 25 minutes late. Apparently, this isn't a real priority for you. No, we'll it come is. Back to a minute. You can wait in the waiting room while we take care of the people that showed up on time. Okay, he can think about that for a minute. All right, Mr. Andrews, I apologize for the confusion here. Your case was on, it was off. Uh, and. Uh, Let's accomplish that sentence now that Ms. Halleck is here. Then we'll do Mr. Hotchkiss. Um, Matt Huff has prepared the screening report in this case. Let's find Mr. Andrews' file.
Here it is. This is file 21884, People versus Adrian Ucab, Wecab, Andrews, charged with impaired driving. Uh, Matthew did a screening report. Um, his attorney, Melissa Halleck, is here now with us. He was very accepting of responsibility for this. He seemed like a mature young man who did a dumb thing, according to Matt, he doesn't really want to be on probation. Um, Melissa, what would you like me to know? Well, I would agree with what you just stated. Um, <clears throat> I know that he is requesting just jail time and no probation. I get that. He feels like he has this under control that he's just realized, you know, it was a one-time thing and he made a bad decision and he doesn't usually do that. Um, um, reading the report, we did just discuss that uh, he, I asked him why he did go in the direction that he went. He said he was just trying to take back roads and avoid the main roads. Um, he said he normally does that, but <clears throat> um, no, I mean, he's working at Pizza Hut right now while he waits for a probationary like a period to end at Grumman Olson and they're welcoming him back there for full-time employment. Um, he has a stable work history there. Uh, and I do think, I don't think it sounds like he needs the oversight, but again, um, he's acknowledging that he has this issue that he let it go a little too far and that he made that bad choice. So hopefully, you know, I don't know if that's enough or not. Um, I think that's a case by case basis for the person, but he does seem rather mature and able to make that decision. Uh, and so I would trust that he is going to uh, proceed a lot more carefully in the future and not do the poor decisions like this again. Um, and so I guess I would just recommend or I guess request that the court follow the guidelines um, and do the um, the jail time that he wants to do or time served. Um, but, yeah, he made a bad choice and I think he's learned his lesson. He's never been to jail before. So this is definitely quite the scary experience for him. So. All right. One moment. TJ, I called that Sullivan case you were on offline um you didn't hear me but she didn't show up and i okay. issued a bench for so you don't need to hang around well mr uh, uh yubikab andrews is my case yeah oh you're his prosecutor okay yeah. i forgot so you're still here all right uh you i think were impressed with this young man also i want to say matt i think did a nice job in the report here um he didn't beat around the bush much. He did own it. Matt's concerned that there's maybe more of an alcohol issue here than rises to the surface. What's your thought, Mr. Reed? I don't necessarily disagree with Matt's um, thought on that. I, I think he's probably pretty accurate. I think part of it has to do with age maturity. Um, you know, the summary of the event is, I think, very well done with the map on there that kind of lays out and shows where this occurred, um, what was going on, where he was coming from. I, again, it, it's always dangerous drinking and driving. He was in Sturgis. He was driving carelessly or recklessly. Um, you know, I, he owned that though. He did it to his, to his credit, acknowledged it. He does have the 2018 minor in possession. Um, I, I'm always a little leery to put a lot of stock in a minor in possession because of the fact that maturity plays a lot in that. It doesn't mean that he's an alcoholic because he was a minor and had alcohol in his possession at one point. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do think that, you know, my thought has always been, and I know the court has taken, if you don't want probation, that's fine, but there's going to be some jail in your future. If you want to earn your way out of jail, do probation, go through the classes and let us monitor you to ensure sobriety. <laughs> Um, anytime somebody tells me that I don't want probation, it tells me they have no intention of really modifying their behavior to conform with what probation means. And if that's the case, drinking is not illegal if you're of age and not on probation, but I do think there needs to be a consequence beyond um, just a fine if that's the case. So I would, 
encourage the court to look at the jail sent straight jail <laughs> sentence as recommended to uh, avoid the probation. Uh, but if he wants to go on probation and not go to jail, I think that would be acceptable as well to the city. All right, Mr. Andrews, anything you want to tell me? Uh, I mean, pretty, I mean, everything that I would have to say has already been said. Well, your lawyer said something interesting. You're old enough and mature enough to make the decision yourself. And I think you're doing it. I'm yeah. going to order what we used to order two days jail credit one, leaving one day to serve what Judge McManus used to call one day sober and one day drunk. I think I'll get my message with one additional day rather than four more jail bed days. There's a $300 fine, $75 crime victim's rights fee, a $50 state minimum fee, a $100 screening fee, $150 attorney fee. Drunk driving is an expensive proposition. Was there a restitution component? $120, $120 to the city of Sturgis, Your Honor. And the victim impact panel is $15, because I'm ordering that. Pretty standard impaired driving sentence pre-COVID. 300 plus 75 plus 50 plus 100. During COVID, we were trying not to put people in jail um, for the health factors, but we seem to have gotten through that. $800, 10 is what I get. Let me add that again. $300 fine, $75 crime victims rights fee, $50 state minimum fee, $100 screening fee, $150 toward a portion of your attorney costs, $120 restitution, and $15 victim impact is $810. Make that due by September 1st. Can you pay that by then? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to have you do your jail time this Friday night. Then again at 7 p.m. This Friday is July 9. One day. Uh, one day sober, one day drunk. You're lucky you didn't hurt yourself or somebody else when you went through this stop sign. And that's, Matt's analysis of what you were doing probably is closer to what happened. Yeah, that, that was that was my biggest scare is that looking back at it, I could have hurt somebody and I don't want to take that chance again because I I am lucky that I did not myself right, most somebody else. Drunk driving cases I have, I never see the people again. Let's hope you're in that category. All right, sir. See you at the jail Friday at 7. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Yep, thank you, Your Honor. All thank right. Let's that. bring Mr. Hotchkiss and Marcus Taylor back in. Uh, we did confirm that Mr. Hotchkiss is employed at Marjo's, where we all like to go and he's got to be at work today. So he was honest about that. Um, apparently the car is legal now, and I don't know what to do with these low-level methamphetamine cases. He's not 7411 eligible. This used to require the suspension of his license. Um, this was a felony reduced to a misdemeanor. I lost, oh, Luke's still here. Um, I'm gonna order nine days jail credit one to be served on weekends, scheduled by the probation department because this weekend is gonna be strange. I'm gonna put on a three month non-reporting probation. There's a $100 fine, $75 crime victim's rights fee, a $50 state minimum fee, and $150 attorney fee. It's an expensive, so is methamphetamine. 
Nobody uses methamphetamine once in a while. I suspect if I were to test you today, it probably would be positive to manage to maintain employment. You weren't really hurting anybody but yourself. $375 doing 90 days during the term of this probation. Uh, Mr. Hotchkiss, we've got the phone number that ends in 7601. Is that correct? My phone number? Yes. It should be 6701. Yeah, that's it. 6701. The probation department will be contacting you setting up these four weekends of jail you have to do, but your weekend is probably on a Tuesday, Wednesday or something. You may have to yeah, I've been, having, I've been having Tuesday and Wednesday off work. All right. Uh, in fact, why don't you go right down stairs and check in with the probation department while you're here. Okay. All right, Mr. Hodgkiss, you're good to go. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, we got Marcus Taylor back with us. Uh, <clears throat> I'll move that conference room. This is file 202864. Mr. Taylor was charged with possession of methamphetamine. <clears throat> it was reduced to a charge of use of methamphetamine. The defendant was arrested on March 1st, posted, or May 1st excuse me, February 1st, so he had one day, and he promptly failed to appear for his pre-exam conference. He had a bench warrant. He got rearrested on March 11th. Um, he posted bond again on March 11th, so he does another day. Then we had a pre-exam conference, and he promptly failed to appear once again. Um, he got arrested again on March 31st, posted bond the same day. So that's three days jail. Then he pled not guilty, set a pre-exam again for April 27th. Again, he didn't show up on April 27th. Judge Patterson did another bench warrant. He got arrested again on May 13th and Posted bond on May 13th, so that's four days. Then the matter was set for sentencing on June 21st. He didn't show up for that. Um, then he called and said he was mixed up about the court date. So we reset it for July 7th, and he promised he wouldn't miss, and he didn't show up for that. We had to roust him out of bed to get him to come to the hearing. So this is the time and date set for sentencing in this matter. Um, um, Ms. Hines, what would you like us to know? Your Honor, I don't have much to say. I haven't had much contact with Marcus other than um, on May 13th um, when he appeared from the jail and he entered a plea to driving white license suspended and use of methamphetamine. So... He is here today. Obviously, he uh, wants to be sentenced, and um, he did appear. Um, despite being late, he is here, and there's no bench warrant that will need to be issued this time. So we'll leave it to the discretion of the court. All right. Uh, Ms. Davis, what would you like me to do? Your Honor, would it be okay for the defendant to speak first if he so chooses? Yes, certainly. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, um, what do you want to know? I just wanted to say I when when I knew I had court today and I knew what time it was, but I was in the process of trying to log on to my Zoom account and my phone recently ha has been having a software issue to where it restarts and it will power back on and then shut down and power back on. And um when I finally was able to get a hold of another device that I could use to get on my Zoom with that's when I was. That's when I called right away. I I didn't purposely, in, uh, intentionally, be late. Okay. Well, what else would you like me to know? That 
I know this has been a very, very long drawn out process and my, with my background and, you know, the record that I have, I pretty much really can't say anything to defend myself because, you know, I'm guilty for what, I, what I've been charged for. And <clears throat> I'm 24 years old and, you know, I still got a lot, a lot of life to live. I don't want to live it dealing with the court system and being in and out of jail the rest of my life. Because, you know, my big, one of my biggest fears is ending up like some of the people that's around, you know, and that's one thing I don't want to do. And I, I'm just ready to get this done and over with so I can move on with my life. Fair enough. Who's this? Is someone else has just joined our queue. This is Tiffany Bowman. All right. Well, my recollection is that I did some jail on the driving suspended. Your Honor, I do have some thoughts now that he has spoken. All right. Yes. So his Prior record's a little confusing because his lien history didn't show his felony possession of math from 2017, but per our court records, he was unsuccessfully discharged from that felony probation in late 2018, and he's been on the show cause docket since then. With that show cause docket, he's had multiple failures to appear, then it'll go months without a payment and without getting arrested. Then he does get arrested, but then he never pays his booking fees. And so it adds on more of an expense. And again, he was failure to appear three times for the PEC in this case. And I wouldn't think he's probably a probation material. So perhaps a straight jail sentence with some work release is what's best for him. I appreciate that he doesn't want to be in this court system and lifestyle any further, but it, it appears that he hasn't really learned anything from his possession of meth in 2017 until today. So I'd ask the court to take that into consideration in sentencing. Can I say something? I did already do the sentence on the uh, DWLS. I gave him credit for the four days that he'd already served. He's got several cases where he hasn't paid fines and costs. One nine, one, two, three, one. Uh, it's a traffic matter, he didn't pay 192599, traffic matter, he didn't pay. We can wipe those out at some point. Probably shouldn't do that here. I'm going to order 34 days jail credit or 30 days to serve, which will start tomorrow. Give you a day to get your affairs in order. 7 p.m. on 7 821. What am I zero fine? $75 crime victims rights fee and a $50 state minimum fee. I think you need some clean time. $150 attorney fee, which is $275. Due by October 1st. I'm gonna wipe out your two unpaid things on those traffic matters. It was $125 in each case. To make it concurrent with one nine one two three one and one nine two five nine nine st um all right you report to the jail tomorrow night at seven o'clock i'm gonna do a one month non-reporting probation make sure you do can i say something your honor Yes. What am I supposed to do about work and everything? 
you're supposed to not work. There's a friggin' consequence to the stuff that you're doing and you're not doing what needs to be done. I think you're still struggling with methamphetamine. I contemplated 90 days. This is your second drug charge. You're driving on a suspended license. Sometimes stuff happens and you gotta suffer the consequence. You I got a day to tell your boss what's going on. You report to the jail tomorrow at seven o'clock. Thank you, Ms. Hines. I'm gonna ask Mr. Huff to join us. Uh, Ms. Bowman yes. deemed to join us 45 minutes late. I've issued a bench warrant for your arrest, but now you're here. Let me see if I can get your probation agent back. I got to take care of those other matters, which he doesn't even appreciate. I'm going to wipe out some of the money that he owes us. All right. This is Tiffany Bowman, who's late to the party, but she is here. Let me find that. I apologize for being late, Your Honor. I had no idea I was supposed to be in the Zoom meeting today. Uh, why not? Because I don't receive any mail from my apartment that I was living in. Well, I told I you in court what day you were supposed to be here. I think. Um, if I do, if I do remember correctly, I do believe you did. However, it is my own fault that I had forgotten. All right, well, let's go back to square one here. Uh, this is Tiffany Bowman, file 202566. Miss Bowman was set for sentencing today on a retail fraud charge. She pled to retail fraud some time ago. Let me get the original complaint. The allegation is that on or about 1116 of 20, she stole some cosmetics from the Dollar General store in Constantine. As I recall, Casey Johnson, the assistant prosecutor, spent quite a bit of time on this and agreed to do a deferred prosecution. So she was to do some things as part of the deferred prosecution agreement she pled to retail fraud third. The matter was set for sentencing for March 18. She was to do 10 hours of community service, pay any civil demands and do the economic crime class. She was also barred from Dollar General. The matter was set for March 18. That's the date I gave her. And she called, I see. March 18th, and they crossed it out. Anyway, you didn't show up, and they got bumped back to April 28th, and you called and said you didn't have the Zoom information for the class. They tried to get you in the class, and you didn't show up. So per Matt Huff, defendant did not do the economic crime class or community service. Please do an order to show cause. So I did an order to show cause and you appeared on May 13th. You indicated you had some tragedy in your personal life. You were gonna do another attempt at the class. We rescheduled the matter for July 1st at 11 and that's what I told you. Um, and maybe the class was July 1st at 11. I'm not sure, but uh, we sent you the notice of the hearing for today and it came back as undelivered. So Tiffany, I now believe that you didn't know of today's date. 
Um, but by the same token, you haven't done any of the things you were supposed to do as part of the deferred prosecution. Um, you didn't do the community service, you didn't do the class. And so that leaves us with a sentencing on the original charge of retail fraud. Ms. Davis, you have any input on this? This was a Lindsay Scheller case, or Casey did it, I think, before. Well, I had my notes open, but I did the docket dispo, and now um, it's just freezing up on me. But as I recall, this is the one where she was caring for a loved one that passed recently. Um, so we gave her some extra time to get it completed because it was a very low amount of um, items. And it's a very sad case, uh, but if she's not going to put the effort into getting the class done, then we can't go forward with dismissing it. So with it being a retail fraud first, I would leave it to the court's discretion as how to um, sentence her on this matter. Thank you. Tiffany, is there anything you'd like to tell me? Um, I'm looking for something, but I'm listening. I won't make any excuses for myself. It is not the person I am. I do own up to not being able to complete the deferral process, and I am willing to accept the charges because it has been almost a year now. Are you working somewhere? I am. I do work full time at Starbucks. I also am trying to look into side jobs such as door dashing. Um, I currently live out of my car and a friend's. So where is your fam where's your family? Um, out of the picture. Where'd you go to high school? Elkhart Central in Elkhart, Indiana. So you you got family in Indiana? Yes. And your boyfriend passed away, and that's certainly regrettable and why we did some extra things, but you just can't do what we're going to do. Um, All this really is, is a first offense retail fraud with some small items. So I'm gonna treat it as such. A $125 fine, a $75 crime victim's rights fee and a $50 state minimum fee. Unfortunately, this is now gonna be on your record as a theft conviction. And everybody but you was trying to not have that happen, but right now the position you're in in your life, you're not able to deal with it. Which Starbucks are you at? Um, the one on Elkhart Road in Dunlap, Goshen. How many hours a week do you get? About 40 to 55 plus overtime. Oh. All right, good. So I'm going to give you time to pay this 250. I'm going to make it due by September 15th. Um, you're also barred from all dollar generals for one year. My impression the first time I met you and the same today that you seem like a nice young woman. You seem intelligent. Um, you seem someone that accepts responsibility. You're just at a low point right now in your life. And we set up an opportunity, several opportunities for you to take this off your record. It just didn't work out. So it's just gonna show as a misdemeanor retail fraud, you have a $250 fine by the 15th of September. Uh, the phone number I had ends in 0576. Is that still correct? Yes, your honor. All right, I do understand why you didn't show up because your mail didn't go, we don't know where to send your mail. Where do we send it? That's a good question. I will, 
I will get a contact. PO box that will update the contact information. All right. Otherwise, you owe me $250 by September 15th. All right. Thank you, Ms. Coleman. Thank you, Matt. For All right, Debbie, I think we did almost everything, six of the seven. Uh, oh, busy yeah. after also. We'll see hey, you then. Thank you, Matt. Um, we had Mr. Hodgkiss down here, but we don't know what you had ordered because I had stepped away. I ordered. Uh, I'll bring the. I ordered four days or eight, eight days over four weekends. He's a kind of hard guy to get a hold of, so I'll yeah. send the thing down there. But um, to get him started on this probation, I put a three-month non-reporting probation to supervise the fact that he completes his weekends of jail. Okay. He mentioned something about testing, but we weren't really sure what he was talking I about. I didn't even order any testing. I said if you tested today, I'm assuming he would be positive, but I didn't order any testing. Okay. Well, good All right. Well, All right. I'll, Thank you. I'll send it down. Yep. Thanks. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Your Honor. See you this afternoon.